Hey everyone, Karnak here, Star Wars Armada Explained. Good to see you all. We're going to jump right into explaining Rift Ambush, new objective from Building the Rim. This objective is using one of the new obstacles. It's using the Gravity Rift. Now remember, the new obstacles are still obstacles. If you try to shoot through them, you still have your attacks obstructed just like any other obstacle. The Gravity Rift, though, has some special rules to it. Let me read it. When a ship deploys at distance 1 to 2 of a Gravity Rift, its speed dial must be set to speed zero, so similar to the grav well effect from the interdictor. When a ship overlaps a gravity rift, its speed dial must be reduced to zero. So if you're going fast and you clip it when you end your maneuver, you're down to speed zero. When a ship at a distance one to two of a gravity rift resolves the determined course step, its speed is temporarily reduced by one to a minimum of speed zero until the end of that maneuver. Again, very similar to g8s from interdictor so if you're going at speed three you got to plan as if you're going at speed two you lose a speed or if you're going to speed one you just don't go anywhere um all right let's jump into this objective i know i've got the objective card there it's got a lot of words and but in order for you to see what's going on i've got to make it smaller so i'm going to go ahead and make it smaller um by this point maybe you uh, you could always bring this up on the star wars armada wiki it's got it up on there you can follow along with me pause the video okay so let's talk about the objective whoops i didn't clean up after myself from the last attempt i tried to do this video let me let me put some things back real quick this will only take a second all right perfect so in this objective, you're going to be using a lot of obstacles. Now, on Vassal, I don't have the Gravity Rift uh, obstacle available for me to use. So what I'm using instead, I'm using this upside down arm station. That's going to be my Gravity Rift. Let's read into the objective card. Setup. The second player places all obstacles. Extremely powerful for second player. I'll show you why. Adding the Gravity Rift and two dust fields and excluding the station. So you, you add the gravity rift two dust fields the normal station you chuck that off the board you don't need it the gravity rift must be placed beyond a distance five of both players edges so in standard obstacle deployment you can deploy obstacles anywhere beyond distance three but it's saying specifically for the gravity rift it has to be beyond distance five of both players edges all right so we're going to stop there so the second player can do something pretty crazy for example watch this so you can set this Thing right there it's beyond distance five um, and then if I want I can I can set up some uh, dust clouds here give myself a little bit of protection you know what I'm gonna throw some again they need to make sure you're keeping stuff beyond distance one of other things so gotta follow normal rules and then uh, you know what I'm gonna put that right there and I'm gonna throw this rock up over here maybe I throw this thing right right here and this guy right there, <laughs> you can you can see like what's starting to go on. So now, second player, look what I have just created. I have essentially have created a uh, a kill zone. And if you if you do this right, you can really set up some really nasty blockage. And you're like, okay, uh, first player, come try to get me. You know, look look at this fortress I've made for myself. And there's pros and cons to that. I mean, if you wanted to like set that up in a corner as a second player, you could really fortress yourself in there. Um, but then you're you're pretty much disengaging yourself from the game and because the first player is going to look I don't want to go charging into that and have all my ships blow up forget it I'm just going to do a, you know the 6-5 loss and pretty much you don't have a game so don't fortress yourself unless the list you're playing against is like absolutely going to beat your pants off um, otherwise you need to try to place these in a, in a better positioning to where you want to encourage the other player to come fight you um I mean, we could talk about that all day, but we're, we're not going to. So Rift Ambush, we've placed all the obstacles. Now we're in the After Deploying Fleets part of the objective card. It says, After Deploying Fleets, the second player may choose one enemy ship. This ship must execute a speed one maneuver with a yacht of nothing. Then the second player may increase or decrease that ship's speed by one to a minimum of speed zero. So we're going to say that the Rebel player, he deployed uh, one ship here, and he's got one ship off over here, and they're all... Um, they're going, this ship is going to go speed 3, and you know what, he's like, oh, I don't want to get close to that rift, I'm going to go speed 2. And the Imperial player has deployed his ship at speed 3, we're going to say. Perfect. Okay. 
And again, all the stuff can still be moved around by like the interdictor grab shift reroute. Um, again, there's that Ezra Bridger card for the Rebels. You know, during the ship's activation, if he's near an obstacle, he can kind of push it around. So stuff can still happen or change from, uh, you know, after deployment. So remember, after deployment fleets is a timing. So things like Governor Price, Bail Organa, other interactions. This is when they get would do they they get used or rather triggered. Remember, first player always goes first. So if the first player has Bail Organa or Governor Price, they have to set that round token before moving on to the second part for the second player. Because the second player goes after the first player in this timing order. So if somebody does set Governor Price, um, you, now you have that information as second player and you can use that against the first player. So it's after the deploying fleets. Again, you can resolve this in any order. Uh, you can choose an enemy ship, and that ship must ex must execute a speed one maneuver with a yaw of nothing. So in this situation, the first player, even if he has abilities that can increase or decrease his yaw, it doesn't matter if he can. He must do the maneuver at speed one with a yaw of nothing. He goes ahead, speed one, forward, there. Boom and done. Now you get to choose a ship to increase or decrease its speed by one. So like, you know what, I'm gonna go ahead and slow this ship down to speed one. Now, um, if you remember Admiral Titus for the Empire, his ability also allows you to increase or decrease a ship's speed by one. You could combo them with this objective's effect to have a ship that was going speed two, well now it's going speed zero, and you forced it to move forward. It can create some very powerful setup combinations for, for first turn if you uh, can plan ahead and if your opponent is unaware um, of something like that. But we're going to leave them at speed one. Okay. Now, remember, if you had distance one to two of, an, of that gravity well, or, uh, yeah, gravity rift, um, remember its special effects are it's going <coughs> to, excuse me, it's going to reduce your speed if you land on it. It's also going to reduce your speed temporarily if you're just trying to move past it. Okay. So he's nowhere near that quite yet. So let's get into the you know special rule. So we're going to say that when this ship had moved forward, I wonder if it could reach it. Yeah, we're going to say when this ship had moved forward, it had accidentally clipped that distance to marker right there. Okay. So that's the beginning of the game. And then, you know, he goes in his turn. He's at speed one. And, oh, I totally forgot to, to, to reveal a, a navigate dial or no he did reveal a dial he increases the speed to two um but again the rift slows him by one so he can only move forward one he moves forward his one and there we go uh now we're getting to the special report once per activation after a ship executes a maneuver he just executed his maneuver if it is at distance one to two of the gravity rift which again we check here to range bands black is range one or distance one red is distance two and again, when you're measuring that distance, you're measuring from closest point to closest point, from the physical plastic base of the ship to the closest uh, point on the obstacle. You don't count the shield dials or shield frames. So you're measuring from the plastic, not the cardboard, okay? When, because it's not an attack. You don't measure from cardboard to cardboard. You're measuring just closest point to closest point. Perfect. Okay. So it is at distance one to two. It must execute a maneuver. Must. Again, it has to do this. Um, and it gets a, uh, a yaw value of nothing. So even again, if you have used abilities or have abilities or have ways to increase your nav, it does not matter because it says you must maneuver with a yaw of nothing. You first player cannot do anything to change his yaw, yaw. That's set in stone. That's solid because again, it says must. You have to do this. Um, and there's going to be people who are going to argue, no, I can change my, my yaw, why can't I? Other, other things let me do it. Like, well, in this situation, the objective specifically says you can't. So you can't. All right, so you execute that speed one maneuver. In this case, oh, you know, he touched the gravity rift. He would instantly drop to speed zero if he touched the gravity rift after that maneuver. Well, now, as you can see, that's going to make it really hard for him to escape the oncoming onslaught of my Star Destroyer. Alright, what happens for the second player though? What happens when the second player gets in range of the Gravity Rift? So we're going to say this Star Destroyer, uh, he moved ahead at speed... Can he reach you with speed 3? 
No, not unless I do something like this. Watch this. So I'm going to go ahead and throw the tool down. And now he sees that poor, helpless, defenseless ship out there, and uh, he's going to do something like this, where he used, uh, you know, two navig, you know, two navigate clicks on three, or rather, he used like a navigation command on three. He moves ahead, and now when he does that turn, you can see here now he's at that distance one to two of the rift. Okay, so now again, once per activation after excommunion maneuver, you check the distance. He's within that distance. If that ship belongs to the second player, it may use its speed one yaw value. And oh, uh, during these triggered movements, probably the special rule, the station does not temporarily slow you. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to do any one speed one maneuver for this, and you wouldn't get out, you know, for be able to do this. So uh, during the special rule maneuver, Rift isn't slowing you down. It still has all the, the rest of its effects. But the second player gets the added bonus of the fact that he, at least he can use his speed one yaw value on his speed chart. So if uh, which a star destroyer the the yaw is one, so he could do something like this. He could yaw one and then he could turn like that. Or again, if you want to be really evil and you want to set up like a double arc on that guy, you know you either. You could do something like this. I think that would get it. Nope, not quite. So close, though. So close. You can see where, like, powerful combinations can come up. I'm going to go ahead and back this guy back up. All right. Oop, there we go. Perfect. All right, he has to, he has to do the maneuver. So we're going to go ahead and put it on the right-hand side. I put him back, but he's got to do it. Okay. And then he executes that speed one maneuver at the of one. Boom. Like that. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and back him up, though, to show some different examples of some other stuff. But that is how the the objective is played. You Second player places all the obstacles. There's no station. After deployment, the player can choose an enemy ship. Uh, if he chooses that ship, it must execute a speed one maneuver with no yaw. He can then choose a ship to increase or decrease speed. Uh, and then if a ship is at distance one to two of the gravity rift, uh, it must execute an additional maneuver that's not slowed by the gravity rift. The first player gets zero yaw, but the second player can use the yaw on his speed one nav chart. Great. Now let's get into all the caveats, and there's quite a few with this objective. And it's something that it, I started a video, I got almost done, and I realized that, oh man, I, I missed more stuff, and I had to go back and re-research. Let's talk about what what can happen during all of this and it's it gets crazy in terms of some of this stuff guys let's talk about uh Maydean and nav teams first so when you get to the special rule part of a ship's the movement where they're forced to do that speed one maneuver and when i'm talking guys unless i say otherwise i'm only going to be talking about second player the second player is the only player who can get any benefit from navigation benefiting effects um, like nav teams or uh, Maydean and and Jerjerod. Let's talk about if you so during your ship's movement, if you did not resolve a squadron, excuse me, if you did not resolve a navigation command in your initial ship's movement, it wasn't resolved, and you land near that station, and now you're doing this speed one maneuver that your ship is forced to do. You can, during this speed one maneuver, use navigation command. Again, only for the second player. Because navigate command says resolve during the determined course step of a movement, which this will have. Meaning that if you did have a dial, and you have your star destroyer here, you could spend that dial in this step of this movement, and you can get a second yaw for your front. So you could go from one that you normally would only have, you can get two, and you can swing that ship yaw two. Uh, or if you've got nav teams, you could spend a navigation token and get that additional yaw. Same thing with Maydean, because his effect is only re uh, dependent on resolving um, navigation commands. Again, you can't slow down. You can't stop the maneuver. The maneuver is going to happen. 
Uh, not even G8s can stop it because it's a must. It, it's a, you must execute this maneuver. Okay. Um, let's talk about... Gosh, there's just so much. So, yeah, you can use your navigation dial in this, in this force speed one movement by the station. Uh, you can use nav teams. Uh, you can use General Maydeen. You can use Moff Jerjerod. Now, Moff Jerjerod is slightly special in that during a, it's during a ship's friendly determined core step is when it can suffer one damage to change the first yaw value of its current speed until the end of its activation. I need to stress this. So if your ship was traveling at speed one and you had used Moff Jerjerod at its current speed at speed one on your physical ship dial, this does carry over <clears throat> until this into this movement. So if you've already suffered the one damage, he made that initial speed one maneuver, got stuck here, forced to make an additional speed one maneuver, he still has access to the double yaw on first click. He doesn't need to suffer a second damage. You've already suffered it. It's still that ship's activation. Now this is where we get into some, some crazy little wording, is that if you had triggered Moff Jerjerod's ability while the ship's physical dial is at speed 2, he would get that initial nav click yaw for the speed 2 maneuver, but when he's forced to do his speed 1 maneuver, you cannot change that speed 2 to a speed 1. He, d he, can't get, he can't utilize his ability at speed for the speed 1 of this maneuver. Why? Because the current speed dial on the ship is set to 2. If it was set to 1, he could trigger it. Or maybe you've triggered it before. But if the physical dial is set to speed 2 or speed 3, he cannot be used to trigger again in the speed 1 maneuver execution. Not unless you have a navigation dial or entrapment formation. Um, and again, you hadn't used navigation dial before this maneuver, and you can resolve it now or use entrapment formation's ability. If you hadn't used it before, you could use it now. You could drop that physical ship speed dial to 1, and then you could trigger his ability. I know it sounds complicated, but what I am saying does make sense. Uh, that is that is allowed within the rules. Um, but again, now your ship speed is set to that speed when you start your next round, though. You can't pop it back up to where it was after you did your initial movement. So again, to cover this again, as clear as I can, Moff Jerjerod only works at the current physical ship speed dial. If it's at 1, he could trigger it at 1. If it's the dial is any greater than that, when it's triggered, it's not going to be. It can't be used for this speed one maneuver because it's a speed one maneuver. He needs to be triggered at the speed one of his dial. Uh, you could do something where if you know you're going to run into that obstacle, though, if your ship is at speed one, trigger him at speed one on your dial, increase his speed to two or three wherever the speed is that you want to move him to. Trigger him again there, so you're going to take two damage. But then when you move, and then you're forced to execute, you already had taken that damage before at the speed one. It still carries over. Uh, so hopefully this is all making sense. If it's still confusing, please leave a comment. I can, I can write it out. I'm, hopefully this has this uh, got you guys covered. I go over all this in his Moff Jerjerod car too. All right, now we're getting into something even crazier, guys. Engine tax. So we've already been talking about how you can resolve navigation commands during, you know, this maneuver if the navigation command again has not been resolved before. So during the determine course step, you can use a navigation command. So again, in this instance, not that Star Destroyers get engine tax, thank goodness, but we're just going to say that somehow it has it equipped. So it does its speed 2. In this situation, we're going to say the Star Destroyer did a speed 3 movement. Uh, whoops. Uh, or you know what? We're going to use this assault potato for this. So we're going to say that uh, when this ship was stuck here, it uh, ended its movement something like that. So it, it now uh, it did its physical ship movement. It ended here. Now it must execute that speed 1 maneuver. So it executes that speed one maneuver like it's supposed to. Let me make sure, yeah, that's going to get it out of the rift. Okay, so we back it up. So 
So it, it must execute that speed one maneuver. And again, as mentioned before, even for first player, even if first player can't get any yaw benefit, if he you know he can still spend a navigation dial or token or dial and token together during this part if he wants to. If he does, he can trigger engine tax because he's resolving a navigation command. So even though again during the force movement from the gravity rift, the special rule. If you can still resolve the navigation command, so when he escapes that rift, like so, he moves ahead zero. If he had exhausted, if he had uh, utilized that navigation command, he may now exhaust engine techs, and he can engine tech as normal. Again, the assault frigates can't engine tech, I'm just using it for this example. Then he can use engine techs and, and pop out of there, like so. Does that make sense? Am I explaining this right? It's just, it's so much. It's so much small interaction. So again, you do the force movement. It forces him out of that slow zone. If you'd resolve the navigation command, um, either during his initial ship movement. Yeah, either during his initial ship movement. Uh, as long as the navigation command was resolved, either after the initial movement or during this part here, you could just spend the navigation command just to trigger it. You can now use engine techs to squeeze even further past this objective. Okay. That's a lot of talking. Hopefully you guys are understanding it. Hopefully I'm explaining it clearly enough. It's just a lot of just intricate little rule interactions going on in there. Okay. Um, I don't think there's anything else. So hopefully you guys have got this. If not, again... Please let me know in the comments if you think I got anything wrong, if I'm not explaining it clearly enough, if you still have any additional questions. Um, with all these objectives, I know it's a lot, but as you play and you understand, uh, it becomes second nature. So I do appreciate you guys watching the video, and uh, like always, I'll catch you guys next time.